Hey gang, welcome back to JJ Hades Garage. Today's video, I want to put the quarter glass back in the passenger side of the 68 Mustang known as Jade. I did a removal video, people seem to like that, so now I want to do an install video. And also, I need to show you how to replace the little guide rollers and the seal at the front of the glass. Let's take a look at what I'm working with. Here's a review of what I'm working with. This is the original quarter glass and frame from the 68 Mustang. As you can see it has a green window in it. That's because this car was factory AC. I have not cleaned this up yet. Chrome has some issues but I can't justify replacing these parts. They're just so expensive. However, I can rebuild what I have. So the gasket here is damaged. I'm going to replace that. Along with that, when I did the driver's side, I didn't film it, but when I put it in, uh, I had a problem with these guides. This one is one that broke. So don't trust these just because they're still in the car and they look like they're okay. You could have issues and snap one of, the, one of them off like I did here. So I ordered a kit. Well, I've actually ordered four rollers, guides, whatever you want to call them. And the, there's the part number. And it says uh, roller window regulator. So that's what they, and, now, and these are blue. Not much difference. I mean, it's the same product, just a different color. Now what I need to do is clean everything up. That'll be just a matter of using some Windex, elbow grease, getting all this stuff cleaned off, trying to get the old grease out of the grooves, or out of the teeth here, the gear mechanism. Uh, I'm going to use some Quick Glow. This is designed for chrome and that'll help clean up you know, the junk that's on here as best I can. The glass, it'll just get Windexed. If I have to scrape anything off, I'll use a razor blade. And then, once I put these rollers on and put everything in the car, which I'll show you, I'm going to use some of this stuff. I have not tried it before, but it seems like it's going to do what I need it to do. This is from, uh, from Napa, as you can see. Non-melting, non-freezing, non-gumming, weatherproof. And it gives a list of things that you can use it for, and the details go a little further on the back, and it says specifically window channels. So that's what I'm going to use. So let's get started and get this thing ready to get back in the car. As you can see, I removed everything and then I reassembled it outside the car. The reason for that is you don't want to lose any parts. So here's a little upstop that is bolted back into the window track. There's another one over here. So I put those back in place. Those will have to come out uh, to put it back in the car. And just remember which way they go in. So you don't you know, turn it the wrong way and it won't do its job. I'm not sure that this one actually has to come out. But I'm going to take it out anyway because it's loose. And it's easy enough to get in there and reinstall it. As you can see there's no real adjustment on these. It just has a hole and a hole there that limits the movement. So now... I'm going to pull the glass out of the track. It just slides out. Now, you can also see I've already started cleaning on this. I've been work I worked on this previously uh, trying to get some of the junk out of here. So, I'll I'll do some little more cleaning in these areas and move on. For the glass itself, I'm going to remove this rubber seal and it should be fairly simple. There's a screw down here at the end. Alright, that comes loose. And in theory, in theory, all this should slide apart or slide out of this track. Well, that moved pretty easily. And I have not had this apart. So, now you can see, again, bad part. I'm going to replace it. I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to clean everything up. But this kit is, again, I've talked about Daniel Carpenter. I love his products. This is something I bought through NPD. Uh, there's the part number. But as you can see, I've already put the driver's side in. This is what I'll be using. So if you were going to take this all the way apart and replace a seal inside, which I don't plan to do, you'd have to take out these two screws in the back. And I don't know that there's one. Yeah, there's, there's some screws up here in the channel. 
So that would allow for this stainless piece to come out and you could get the glass out and re-bed re it if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that. I wanted to show you this though. You can see the condition of the chrome. It has some mild, you know, pitting and again I'm not going to replace this. But I'm going to use some of this quick glow. And I'm just going to put it on a paper towel. Nothing nothing special. Maybe I can get a good angle there. Now, does it make it brand new? No, but it definitely cleans it up and makes it a bit shinier. So I'm going to clean up the rest of this and then work on degreasing and cleaning up the uh, mechanism. Don't really need to film that, just a matter of chemicals, you know, all that sort of thing. And then we'll go over swapping out these rollers. All right. Shiny. Now, with this seal, I've noticed it does have a, a recessed area right here. That is where the screw goes through. So I'm just using a screwdriver to indicate that. And, you know, when they make these, it just kind of builds up around that, that hole. So you have to be careful just to remove that little piece of rubber that's inside there. So, just enough that I'm exposing the hole. Now, we'll see here how this goes together. Now, stuff like this, when you're putting it in, don't try to push it from the end, because you could bend it. Grab it up here at the front and encourage it. Kind of drag it into place rather than try to shove it into place. You don't want to bend that thing. So I'm going to take the little screw, see if I can find the, there we go, very nice. Now of course you'll clean this up a little bit, get the release agent off of it, you know, from when they made the, the rubber piece. Other than that, that's about it. Now I also had cleaned up these guides, still may take a little bit of effort. These have kind of a, almost a springy effect to them, where it pinches onto the tracks. Yeah, that still works, but you don't have to, now if these are broken, I don't know how, you know, there's rivets that hold these in place. I'm not going into all that, because mine are fine. But I'll, I'll clean up a little bit more of this junk that's in here, just to make sure they go into the tracks easier. And speaking of this piece, You'll notice, you know, there. this is like when they undercoated the car originally, you know, inside the uh, quarter, they sprayed junk in there, so that's overspray. This, really not a big concern. If you think about it, this is a heavy piece of metal, and this is just a surface rust. Not going to hurt it, but if you want to, you can, you know, knock this down, spray some paint on it, you'll be good to go. I still need to clean off here. This is from where I had, uh, when, the, when the windows were in the car, and I had uh, color sanded and buffed. So this is just compound, and that'll come right off. Again, I'll clean up these tracks a little more, make sure nothing is interfering. You also have this track. Again, I've cleaned it up somewhat. I'll show that later. The mechanism itself, you know, it's basically just grease. You know, I'll probably probably use some more of this this so glide on these contact surfaces. But if we put the crank on here, you can just it moves freely. It's just dirty. All right, these pretty simple. They have these little snap around clips. You can see it's got like a I don't know like a horseshoe kind of shape to it. Really, you can probably just pull these out with your fingers, or you could take a pair of pliers and pull on them and there you can see the shape 
way, the way these are designed is you just push them on when you install the new ones. You don't have to pull the clips out. That's why they're that's why they're shaped like that. So I'm going to take this one off as well. I'll just use the pliers since I'm here. Comes right off. Now you, again, clean up this stuff. Uh, make sure there's nothing that's going to interfere with the new piece going in. So let me do that. So I cleaned them just with a little Windex. Now again, you can see that that clip, it doesn't have to come off. It's designed to spread around that pin and lock on. That's it. Don't pull the pins. Or the release pin, release, release clip, whatever you want to call it. Really simple. Now I'll clean this up and then uh, I think we'll be ready for the install. Okay, you talked me into it. I cleaned that up, put some paint on it. Now what I want to do is get some of this sill glide. And I haven't used this before, but it looks just like a, a grease. So I'm just going to put some in the groove here and just coat it in with my finger. I'm not trying to put in, you know, enough to lubricate an engine. <laughs> Just want to get some on these tracks. And of course it'll work its way around as I go back and forth. I'll add some to this other piece in a minute. I just wanted to see how this works. If I just inserted the glass out here. Oh wow. Wow. <laughs> that slipped right in. Okay. So now we know. Gonna leave that on these. So what you're gonna find is there's these two upper bolts that go into the inner structure of the quarter panel let's say and then there's one down here on this bracket that also has two bolts the reason for that that lower one is this can slide in and out and what that does in effect when it slides in and out it pivots the glass so if you have what we'll call witness marks of where the bolts were before you'll be further ahead uh, you can almost lock it in to where it was and be done. But at this point, I'm going to remove that bolt and these other two bolts and get ready to put the backing plate in. With the plate in place, I'm going to bring in the regulator up from underneath. And the four small bolts, hold that. Now I need to get the glass in. This one has to go in first, the one that's lowest. So you kind of have to Move the plate around a little bit. That first one slid into the track. Rotate the glass as you go down slightly. And then the challenge is getting both of the other rollers on the tracks. And once they're on, it'll slide down pretty easily. Or at least it should. Now what I want to do is see if I can attach that roller, the one I talked about earlier that faces outboard. Um, if I turn, let me see if I can, just so you know, make sure you have the regulator turned down slightly so that you have some room to move this arm. I want to get the 
uh, guide roller into the track on the glass. So it's just a matter of sliding it down. So that's what I'm referring to. Now it's in the upper track and off to rotate the crank, the regulator to go down to get the other bracket in place. So now what I want to do is put the lower track in and I did put some lubricant on this. So you slide that on and it's hard to see. Rotate that around. It's going to hook on to the lower spot here and you may have to manipulate this slightly to get it to drop into place. And you can move this and it'll help we help get the bolt lined up. So we'll get this one in. Tighten that one up. Tighten this one up down below. Now what I want to do is get the window itself up so I can get these two upper bolts into the main channel. So I'll bring the window up, get a look at those openings. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Maybe not, move this. So get that one in. May have to not make that one tight yet. There it is. Okay, now, as I was mentioned several times, there are, you know, like what I call witness marks. So you can move this around and kind of get an idea where those are. Once the bolt is centered over that mark, I'm tighten it up. That one looks pretty close. All right. At this point, there's things that you need to look at as far as adjustments. You know, that plate that's in the bottom, if you take that plate and you move it inboard towards the car, the top of the glass is going to come out and inverse. You move it outboard, the top of the glass is going to come in. I think I'm pretty close as far as the channel where it lines up with the roof line of the car. Now what's going to come into play later as I move forward and play with the door glass as well, you know this will have to be manipulated along with the door glass so that they're on plane with each other whenever everything is closed. Let me show you another angle of this. So looking at the glass and the gap it's pretty consistent all the way up. So I don't know that I'm going to have to do much adjusting, but if I do, like I said, you just that down there in and out with these two bolts. Just to check. The only thing left to install are these little stoppers. So I'll have to I'll have to track the window back down. So there's one right there. So I have to get that in place. So the other one goes right there. You can see that hole. So again, same thing. Put it in place, put the bolt in, tighten it up. A little easier to do if you don't have a camera and lights in your way. <laughs> There's something else I want to do before I finish. And I'll just show you. I had ordered the seal kit. You know, the fuzzies and the weather stripping seals. This is for this quarter right here. Now being that this has a new quarter panel, you know, the holes are there for these three clips, right? In the kit, you get two of these, and you get two of these that are the fuzzies that go on the filler panel that goes here. However, I am not going to use these. 
the the material that is on here appears to be less than what is on the existing pieces that I have on the fillers. Along with that, in that kit you get this pack of its screws and staples. The idea is these pieces get stapled on. So you have to, there's a little drill bit inside of this and you have to drill uh, the holes for the staples. This is not an easy thing to do and it's not a lot of fun. Along with that, you get a set of self-tapping screws. Well, what are those for? I'll tell you. Uh, when you put these seals in, the three clips go back here. One, two, three. So if you envision it following that shape, this section up here in the front is going to take either you can use these little self-tapping screws or you can get another type of small screw. Um, so when you pop this on, you'll have to come right here, drill a hole, or use a self-tapper. I would drill a hole personally and then put a screw in there because there's nothing up front here to hold that. So you can see what I'm talking about. There's a hole back there, one there, and one there, and then you have to make a new hole to hold the front edge. So, so there's the weather stripping in place, and there's the screw I put in. That completes the passenger side quarter window. The driver's side is already in, the weather stripping is in. I still need to do more with the vent windows for the doors themselves. I need to replace seals and stuff in there. That'll come later. I do want to finish recovering or covering the package shelf so I can get it in place. And that'll take care of most of the back of the car. Now, of course, carpet will be coming soon. The filler panels that go in the back over the quarters, uh, interior quarter pieces. And then, of course, the seat, all that sort of stuff. So stay tuned. There's more to come. I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. So I decided to be proactive. Well, I already ordered four of these. Put two on the, the uh, dry uh, as you can see, it has a green tint because it's a factory AC car, and these need cleaned up. I haven't done anything except for the windshield. I'm going to replace that because it's just too rough. This glass, this quarter, uh, this upper portion, or this this rear portion of, of this, well, blah, blah, blah. Now, what I want to do is get the window up so that I get these, whoops, sorry. Turn this the right way. Oh, I'm try.